Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on another Halloween science video. Today, I'm going to try to answer, or at least uh, start to try and answer, a question I've had for a while about fog juice. Fog juice is a particular interest of mine, and I hear a lot that one of the uh, simple ways to get around the expense of store-bought fog fluid is to make your own. And typically that recommendation comes as a mix of vegetable glycerin with distilled water. You mix these two up in various proportions, mix them up well, and voila, you have fog juice. Now, I am not completely against DIYing your own fog juice. I've softened my stance on that over the years uh, after I've learned more about it. However, a glycerin and distilled water mix is probably the worst way you can go about it. Uh, for a whole lot of reasons, only one of which I'm going to try and get into today. Uh, it, once you start adding more chemicals to this mix that would make it more appropriate, you start getting into the cost of commercial fluid, and so that kind of defeats the point of uh, making your own. So what I'm trying to do today is simply investigate at what point does vegetable glycerin and water as a fog juice start to go bad? And by that, I mean something very specific. See, glycerin is not good at killing bacteria once it's diluted with water. Whereas commercial fog juices uh, have propylene glycol and triethylene glycol in it, um, which is an excellent killer of bacteria. Um, glycerin does not do that. So once you mix these two together in non-sterile environments, like I assume everyone is, uh, you're going to introduce bacteria, and at some point that bacteria is going to grow. At what point does that bacteria begin to become significant enough that uh, you want to consider maybe not doing this? Well, uh, here's how we're going to try and figure that out. So, I have my water and vegetable mix. I'm going to mix those together. I'm going to take bog fog, and I'm going to put that in a separate container, and I'm going to let them sit uh, for about a week before I take my first measurement. And whenever I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mix, and I'm going to put it through a lab strainer, and hopefully catch everything that's in there on one of these. This is a filter paper. It is 0.45 microns of pore size, which means this is going to let the water and glycerin through, and it's going to catch the bacteria. And so the bacteria are going to lay on this little graft paper. That paper is going to go into a filter. I'm going to filter it out, and then put this entire thing into a Petri dish with some uh, agar in it, specially made agar for this type of experiment. And then watch it grow over the course of about 72 hours or more, just to see uh, what grows on it. And so I'll have two of these for each sample I take. One from the bog fog, one from the, uh, the glycerin and water mix. And we'll see how much, if any, uh, bacteria grows over time. And I think that's going to give us at least an idea of how much uh, bacteria you have in your, in your fog juice. Now, there's going to be a lot of things that can affect this. Heat affects this, relative humidity affects this, how many times you open and close and shake up and stir your fog juice. All of that is going to introduce more and more bacteria. Uh, so the more you do those things, the more bacteria that you could possibly have in there. Uh, it's, uh, there's a whole lot of factors that go into it. So this is not going to be conclusive um, in the way that would be helpful for, uh, you know, determining how to store your uh, fog juice if you decide to do something like this. Um, but at least give us the idea of store-bought versus DIY, over time, will one or the other grow more bacteria? So hopefully we'll, we'll see. So uh, let's get started sterilizing some of our instruments. So one of the things I'm trying to do is keep bacterial contamination at a minimum. Uh, so to do that, I need to sterilize some of the stuff I'm working with. And 
And I do that by first wrapping these in aluminum foil, because after the sterilization, I don't want them contaminated with the air. to put these in a pressure cooker for about an hour. Now, while this isn't quite as good as an autoclave, it will get the job done. Uh, it may not kill everything, uh, but the things that it wouldn't kill uh, probably wouldn't be on here to begin with. And this one's so big, I have to do it separately. Now again, I'm not trying to be entirely sterile with all this. I'm just trying to get it as good as I can, get it all within reason. Um, this is already way beyond anything I'd expect people to do making their own fog juice at home. Uh, so again, I'm trying to just eliminate any other potential contaminants, but this is way more than, this is gonna be way more sterile than anyone's gonna have reasonably at their own home. Okay, I'm gonna toss this in as well. Okay, and that's gonna be another hour for this. Now remember, the uh, this Instapot is not an autoclave. It's not gonna get it as perfect as uh, a serious lab instrument would. Uh, this will only get up to about 12 PSIs, where autoclaves would normally get up to about 15 PSIs. Uh, so uh, that's still really, really good considering, uh, you know, I'm not in the professional lab setting here. So I already mixed my water glycerin mix, 70% water, 30% glycerin. And I have my just straight 64 ounces of Froggy's Bog Fog. Uh, now all I want to do is... Make sure this is really mixed up. And this is my attempt at just keeping all of the bacteria I can off of the, uh, out of here from my house mixer. And I'm gonna do this for about five minutes, just to make sure everything is as mixed up as possible. In order to collect any bacteria that's gathered in our samples, I have to put it through a vacuum flask with a membrane in the middle. So what I'll do is open this up gently. I'll pour our water and glycerin mix inside. Close it back up to keep a vacuum seal. And I'll turn on the pump to help assist filter that through. So that's 200 milliliters of water and glycerin mix that's being forced through the membrane there. That's hopefully catching any bacteria that's uh, grown in there. Okay, it's been about a minute. I'm gonna turn this off and remove the original container. And what I'm left with is a very delicate membrane with hopefully no bacteria on it. I'm not expecting anything 
uh, from these original tests. Uh, I don't imagine any bacteria would grow on that quickly. So uh, hopefully these will all come out negative. I'll take the filter membrane, place it carefully in the middle of my Petri dish with agar in it. Make sure there's no air trapped underneath this. And cover it up. I've already labeled water glycerin after one day. And we'll get ready to incubate this. So because I don't have an incubator, I needed to come up with something that would help me keep these samples at about 37 degrees Celsius for a couple days. Uh, 37 degrees Celsius is the ideal temperature for culturing bacteria. Uh, so that's what I was aiming for. What I came up with was this upside down lamp with a ceramic bulb fixture uh, underneath a polycarbonate plate. And uh, what I was able to do was adjust that temperature or adjust the distance from the polycarbonate plate so that I was able to get just about 37 degrees. Oh, that, yeah, just about 37 degrees on the dot. And so what I'll do is I will place these samples upside down on here. And I will let them sit for a couple days. I will come and check back uh, in about 72 hours and take some pictures and see if they're growing anything. Okay, I'm back. It's been 48 hours, not 72 hours. But after taking a peek at things, I think we're ready to look at it. So first up is our Froggy's Bog Fog. And when we take a look at it, we can see that there is virtually no bacterial or growth of any kind at all. There's a little bit of discoloration here and a little bit of discoloration there where it kind of manhandled the uh, membrane. That is growth of some sort, but of note, let me see if I can zoom in here. If you see a little ring of moisture around the edge, that's where the vas vacuum flask came together and held it in place. So where the growth is, there was actually no fog juice whatsoever. So that was dry there, and that's just environmental contamination that got on the, on the slide, and it wasn't protected at all by fog juice. Now, if I grab my water and glycerin mix and see what happened there, that is after 48 hours of culturing. This result really surprises me. I thought both of them would be pretty much the same. I thought both of them would be like the bog fog. There wouldn't be much on it. I wouldn't expect something like this until maybe a month in, if not more. Uh, I didn't really know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting this. And again, I'm not doing this in a sterile environment. I don't think anyone who's DIYing their fog juice is. Taking a closer look at the plate here, it looks like a yeast, uh, but I am not a microbiologist. I'm not sure by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, identifying stuff on a Petri dish from colony morphology alone is questionable at best. So I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm guessing that it's just a very common, ordinary strain of yeast that we breathe in thousands or millions of, of spores every day, and it doesn't affect us at all. But it does show that what will grow on one will not grow on another. And that's kind of my concern. So I'm going to continue this experiment. I'm going to take another sample in a week and then another sample in a month and see if we get anything new, see if we, see if we get anything changed. Uh, I am now very interested uh, in seeing the results of all this. I hope you'll stick with me and we'll see what happens.